production is part of the Game Fire Network. Netcast for gamers by gamers. Welcome to Game Fire. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes right here on the Game Fire Network, www.gamefire.com. Won't you tell a friend or two or three or four? We are almost live from the year 1944 here in the glorious industrial sector of Stersdorf. The first time we've done a Stersdorf replay in opposing fronts. And we have a match between Kill Your Mom and Bone Dog, so one of these guys is going down. We'll have to find out who. Vermont versus British. Who will come out on top? Stay tuned for details. With me, as always, is myself, Bridger. And uh, always, as always, my talented but exhausted co-host, Vittensby. Welcome to the program. Never too tired to do a show with you, though, Bridger. It's oh, absolutely always good not. It's energizing, good really. Fun. It is. You know, I get my heart rate up. Uh, we have a match today between uh, Guderian from the RSA clan, uh, which uh, Aniketo, Savikin, and uh, Spikes are in. All uh, four very talented players. Uh, he's the one that's smurfing under Kill Your Mom. And then we have Bone Dog from uh, Team God, I believe, is his uh, clan oh. on GR. Yeah, and they're not uh, just a little Bone vain Dog... or anything, are they? <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, Bone Dog was one of the three people who was kind of instrumental in the whole Pio spam thing. Uh, that being himself, Bone Dog, uh, Kem, and uh, Aniketos, of course. Each three kind of, I believe, played some part in uh, making that strat pretty, pretty popular and abusable. Some say British are overpowered because of uh, commandos and trenches against Wehrmacht. Others say Wehrmacht's overpowered because you have Nebelwerfers and uh, Pio Spam to uh, to Stugs, and Stugs are very effective against British. So I don't really have uh, too much else to say. It should be an interesting match. From my personal experience, British are uh, shit out of luck on this map. So I hope we can see some nice tricks uh, being played uh, from Bone Dog. Another reason why people think uh, <laughs> Wehrmacht is overpowered against British, last thing before we start, is uh, because Panzer Shreks really chew up emplacements very fast. So, But then again, uh, <laughs> Panzer Elite have Panzer Shreks as well, so I don't know how valid that is. They're just is, a little weaker but, in uh, damage, if I recall, and, uh, and, and yeah. something else I don't remember. All right. That's what. Five second mark, so let us get started in five, four, three, two, one. Lay on. Let's do it. Okay. So... We have in the south here the British player, and in the north we have the Wehrmacht player. And we'll see how they expand. The British player most likely going for the plus 16 munitions point on the right-hand side. It's going to be the safest bet for to put his HQ on, and it looks like that's exactly where his, uh, his original recon squad is going. Uh, you definitely want to get a good munitions point or fuel point, at least medium, to put your truck on. Problem is, the plus 10s that are over here are a lot closer to the enemy's base, going to be a lot easier to attack. The plus 16 is much more, much safer in general. You're going to have a line of defense between you, between your trucks and your enemy for the most part back there. Yeah, I don't know if we've had the rebalanced version of Sturzdorf on the show since it was rebalanced. Um, we'll find out how balanced it is. I suppose in this one, uh, some people still complain that the South is still underpowered. Other people who are fanatical about this map say that it's pretty well balanced, that people just don't really know how to uh, play it that well. We do have a Pio Spam strat. Uh, I would expect him probably to fast tech up to Tier 3. That seems to be one of the, the mainstay anti-British uh, strategies. Uh, focus on outcapping him with massive amounts of Pioneers and uh, tech up quick to Stugs. Start spamming those. Um, I don't know if he's going to be moving his HQ. Looks like he's getting the extra Tommy squad, which I remember commenting on uh, back I don't know, a few replays ago when Savikin was playing. Never really understanding why Ooh. you get that extra infantry section. But uh, we have lost a look at that. Oh, he looks, almost looks succeeded like sneaked in sneaked sandbagging through. right there. Wow. wow, that was very close. Well, actually, not really close. He could have. He had to do one more section in order to get it to happen. But wow. That was, uh, if he hadn't gone up there right then, that would have been in big trouble for the British player. Because once you get your truck to that plus 16 munitions, 
the only real place to expand and keep your trucks relatively close together and also get a decent income is to that plus 16 fuel. Uh-oh, here we go. Triple, no, quadruple pioneers running down here. Now remember, they are taking the 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 penalty the zeal penalty basically that the that the pioneers get in terms of uh they get take plus five percent damage for every other pioneer squad that's near them but that doesn't really matter if they're uh if there's enough of them and the british yeah, bone... recon squad is a lot weaker so it's not even going to dish out to, to take advantage of that damage it looks like you can't block that part off with uh, sandbags, or maybe mm. you can. He's just not able to get it off. Oh, there he is. Yes, the, the last part. He's trying to build it with the three, and he might get it done, too. He's yeah, he's got to build damage, it. But he's got it. He had to build it sideways, but it's there. Ouch. Yeah, but those pioneers aren't doing jack against those Tommies. Now they're starting to do a little bit better, but man, did that take five squads to do something? Now, the problem is, even with uh, the 5% damage increase if they're behind uh, I think it's a damage increase but if they're behind cover like that it's not really gonna matter is it probably not uh, interesting opener from uh, I was commenting on the the two Tommy squad thing I think it's 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 a safer bet to do that um, if you're gonna try to tech up really really quickly then maybe move your truck play it a little defensively uh, before getting that second Tommy squad, but it usually you'll have a crap load of manpower, and it's probably almost always better to get that extra um, Tommy squad in general. Uh, map control going obviously in the Fairmarked player's favor. Um, yeah, of course, look how much bias. how much fuel does he have coming in? He must have a lot now. Oh, he's not got a plus 16 yet. As soon as he gets that, he'll have a ton. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm on uh, Bone Dog's position. Oh, that's so. right. That's right. I'm on. Okay, so I'm looking at it right now. Plus 37 yep. fuel. That doesn't make any yep. sense. And he's I don't know why it shows me that. That that's should totally be. We've got five and ten. We got fifteen plus sixteen is thirty one. Plus five should be thirty six. I don't know why it's thirty seven. It's really weird. Oping the plus sixteen very smart. He's going to be able to pump out a lot of stugs real quick. Yeah, this is kind of the quintessential uh, matchup right now, at least in the in the meta game. A uh, little bit of wire going down. Uh, we do have an early bunker and heroic a mine. Heroic charge? Is that? No, that's not heroic charge. They're just running regular, and it looked weird, I yep. think. Interesting strat so far from, uh, from Gudarian. And he upgraded MG, but just a few seconds too late. It's really unfortunate. It almost, almost nullifies the, uh, the value of that, but that bunker will be able to uh, provide a little bit more cover for the uh, pioneers, maybe hold them off for just a few seconds longer, but yeah, he's going to get cut off on, on, on the right-hand side unless he can figure out a way to, to link through that plus five fuel over there. Uh, meanwhile, he's taking map control steadily on the left. Uh, it's interesting, interesting opener from, from both players. Uh, British obviously is struggling uh, just to try to hold on to something, and the inevitable tier three is probably going to pop out within a within a few minutes or two. It's probably it looks like he's upgrading his uh, his HQ right now. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, I, I can't think of an easy way for uh, for the British um, in tier one to counter a bunker like that. I mean, what are your infantry upgrades? You got the Bren, you got rifle grenades. I mean, you can kill something in there, right? with rifle grenades. But whereas the other sides can flank and use flamers or can use panzer shreks, um, I think you really have to upgrade a sapper squad before you get the effective means of taking out a bunker real quick. Unless, it, am, I, am I wrong in this? No, I think you're, you're spot on. British really don't have a, a, a counter to the bunker in tier one. But they tech up so quickly that I don't know if it's really a problem. And it's so map dependent that- uh, That's true. Yeah, but uh, I'm a little bit surprised that Guderian's playing a bit sloppy. Uh, I don't know if I could even call it sloppy, considering that it seems like he wants to lose his pioneers. He's made no effort to retreat them. I guess he doesn't want to have the upkeep penalty, and at this point I probably would think he thinks that they're, that, that they're worthless, um, that the manpower penalty is not worth it anymore. Um, I would beg to differ as uh, someone that used to do, you know, Pio P's and you know the five Pio starts that it's really important to keep those Pios for mid-game capping power. It's not worth the sacrifice, uh, no matter what, to lose that squad. You know, leave them on un, un, but leave them unreinforced at your base, but 
just do something with him. Um, also, you know, he's, his uh, Sturm Armory is now coming out a lot slower than it, it could have, say, if he had, you know, an extra squad or, or two there to uh, to build it up. Probably see a com Comcraft Center pretty soon afterwards. Yeah, that's likely to be the case. British slowly taking, you know, the map control that probably should have been theirs from earlier in the game. Uh, interesting yep. that they uh, would choose... Okay, decapping the fuel just to try and slow him down. I was going to say, it's not connecting to anything yet. But, uh, probably a good idea because he knows that uh, the Wehrmacht player um, got a lot of fuel earlier in this game from getting you know every major fuel source for the first two or three minutes. So he had a big influx of fuel. So stopping his fuel income now is probably one of the biggest priorities, which is why he went for the fuel first rather than the plus 10 munitions. Yep, we have a quick sapper squad. Uh, might be putting up some kind of uh, anti-tank defense uh, somewhere, or and probably infantry upgrading AI. the piots. Sorry. I was just saying, the infantry guy sat right next to the truck and didn't actually get in cover. Ah. Uh, we have another Tommy squad coming out. <laughs> Pretty steady manpower um, usage by Bone Dog, uh, never really floating more than 500, which is uh, always always good to keep an eye on that. Um, unlike the replay we had a couple weeks ago where the guy was floating 800 the entire game. Uh, good use of the snipe ability on the on the infantry section on the left-hand side took care of that flamer before it could even do any damage. Um, there's been an interesting strat that's come out recently. Um, the uh, the kind of the infantry section spam with uh, the recon squad upgrade. We have a quick Puma out on the right. Didn't even notice Ooh, that. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I think he's got two recon squads now, so he built a second one. Uh, and I think that might be a problem going up against the Sturm Armory. He doesn't have a Bren to button anything, so that might be a huge problem for him. Yep. And there's a 17-pounder going up, which is definitely going to be able to uh, to help out now. And he keeps on turning it. Might get a shot off. Puma pathing. Puma pathing. I missed it. Oh, just missed. Puma, heavy recon deployed. Let's see how well the Pumas do. Well, is he gonna turn around in time? Puma got slowed down by the lamp post. Stop moving and fire. Yeah, it's it's gonna take a rear shot. Without a doubt. No. Ah, uh, oh, it was fired, one of those. but it was just out of range. Yep. I just saw it cross out of range just before it fired. Now, if it had been the patch 2.2 patch, it probably would have got it, <laughs> oddly <laughs> enough. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, commandos are totally, totally uncounterable. Well, you know, Pumas are a pretty good example of how you can counter that. So, I don't, I don't know. It, I'm not saying they're not easily countered by Pumas, considering you have to deal with emplacement. I'm, I'm sorry. The command that Puma, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Considering you have to deal with emplacements and, and sappers, but it's certainly a reliable counter as long as you kite and you're smart and you have pioneers there to repair them. You know, they pretty much completely forced uh, uh -oh. Bone Dog off the map. There's really nothing much he could do at this point. Nebelwerfer is coming out to uh, to help out just in case. Uh, I'm surprised. Okay, so he's definitely got tier two, but I don't know. Sappers aren't really going to stand up against the Puma for very long, are they? Or especially not two. No, he's going to have to get a, uh, a squad. Uh, oh, Jesus, Bridger. He's going to have to get a Stewart. Yeah. It looks like he might get the decap, but not the recap. Yeah. Snipe it, Is snipe it, it, snipe it. Is it going to get out of there? Oh, it did. Uh, the flamer squad, yeah. too. He's out of munitions. Oh, but the Stewart's not going to do it because the, uh, the Puma on the left here just got an upgrade. Up gun, baby. Let's see how uh, nicely that Neville wor Neville Warfare for oh, Barrage. Oh, charge. charge. Trying to get him out of the way. It's very long range, so it didn't seem to do too much uh, yeah, in that's... terms of accuracy. Yep. Killed a couple squirrels, though. I can smell their burnt carcasses from here. Is that? Yep, that's a Piat Sappers. Yeah, we do have two, two uh, recon squads, so he will be able to. He's pretty low on munitions. Um, I don't know if he's going to go up to Cromwell's or what he's going to do. Um, that's great cover. Those buildings will be provide excellent cover in order to uh, you know fend off that Puma, and hopefully he can secure that fuel for himself. He really desperately needs to get some kind of uh, tank on the field. 
uh, that can counter that. Uh, once you know the Nebel Warfare gets in action, if that gets one good barrage off, uh, he, he's he's definitely going to be in trouble. And it looks like Guderian's setting it up uh, to get that all important barrage off before he loses his uh, his high fuel point. Yeah, where is he bringing it now? If he's trying to bring it closer. He's going to bring it all the way around. Yeah. Probably to be guarded by the bunker for the most part. And uh, I assume we're probably going to see uh, a Stug pop out now, because that's what he's going to need. Ground. Just in case we start seeing Piats and stuff show up. The Stug, the stug front alarm. Oh, an officer! That'll work against Piats too, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's very interesting and unconventional. Um, Guderian's playing with the luxury of... Uh, of a, being on a smurf so and 17 pounder just came up bunkers getting shot hopefully you'll counter cancel that good job Nebel war for barrage coming in on the right uh, if he doesn't move yeah he's gonna he's gonna be taking some serious damage let's see how how this does oh no ouch see that that's not too bad that's how much a evil warfare should do that's how much a walking stuka might sh might be able to do on on a single direct hit but you know if that was a walking stuka that entire squad would have been obliterated maybe for a sliver of health you know. <laughs> oh, yeah makes me so angry we'll see what what uh comp uh, doctrine he's going to be going i heard it was blitz so we'll probably see some storms coming out soon he does have three cps so it seems like he's a bit undecided in what he wants to do that officer's obviously an interesting choice uh, oh, he's nothing not, much he's, he's sneaking around here i don't know what he's gonna do <laughs> nothing uh, much maybe, he can do against he's that drop uh, some uh artillery already yeah this is risky you better just retreat yeah propaganda bye retreated the sappers oh man not too bad sure. he got the sappers not sure what the heck the point of that was except to uh swing around the side maybe use the buildings to uh yeah i don't know about that one interesting choice oh, here comes the next nebel barrage he probably just doesn't want uh he probably doesn't want to bone dog to gain any ground which is why he, he retreated that squad and so he can't really push forward a second nebel warfare might not be such a bad idea um, right now we see something being built yeah it might be another nebel it's interesting he didn't go straight up to stugs and he's not really using that puma on the left very effectively he hasn't moved it at all in the longest time yeah. Uh, definitely could have done maybe a little bit of scouting. Uh, tried to try to see where his trucks are. Take a couple, couple shots uh, at them. At least try to figure out if there's an armor command truck on the field or not. But um, doesn't look like he's uh, he wants to do that. Uh, also, those pioneers have been sitting there for a very very long time. Could have at least capped that uh, strap point. Yeah, give him an extra plus three. He's a little yeah. bit inattentive on the left, but we do have stormtroopers popping up. I mean, it looks to me like like the Axis player has this one in the bag. He just hasn't gotten to the victory points yet. And it feels like he should. He's got all the advantages right now. He's got uh, three Pumas, one of which has an upgun. He's got an officer to retreat the enemy if he needs to. And he's got two Nebels to drop to force him to run away anyway. Yeah, the Nebels are a pain in the ass. Brits are just so slow, so slow. Yeah, and he's he's kind of blobbed all of his infantry together. I would hate to see what one stray shot from a Nebel Warfare yeah. would actually do to... Pinned! <laughs> that. Yeah. Captain's on the field. Maybe going to go for some uh, cabbage on the left. Uh, we do have... He's going to uh, cap with the captain. We do have commandos being selected. Looks like he's dropping a glider. Ooh, the far is. right... Uh -oh. Uh oh! Almost got destroyed. Oh, nice! Propaganda for the win. Oh, and kills the glider too. Plus four XP. How did he? Well oh, played. It was already uh, very d damaging. Heroic charge. That uh, lieutenant is in the, trouble. The officer, yeah. And he doesn't have. Oh, there he is. He's all alone. Calling artillery. Oh. Oh, he does that. You're calling the artillery. Killed wow, the AT gun. Wow, that is a great gun. counter. Wow. Counter placements. They already had the. Oh, Bundle storms made. are now available. Bundle and boom. Made. Puma's going off. This is pretty bloody right here. Oh, man. Nebel's this going is a off massacre. to hit the retreat. Oh. And now is the perfect time to exploit that. Here they go. Pushing through. Still yep. four storms left. Look at how many of them died on the way back. 
I think they also lost a captain. There was a plus, or plus or a lieutenant rather. There was a plus fifteen there. Yeah, I think the puma got the lieutenant. 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 Oh god! Yeah, look at the like... captain was almost killed too. Holy crap! Yeah, Bone Dog uh, is uh, is shit out of luck right now. Wow. He's really got to figure out how to do something. You know. Remember, folks, commandos are so overpowered. There's no counter for them at all. Everyone loses games, right? They really need a nerf, a hard nerf, right? I don't know. I'm just joking. The reinforced cost is a little bit too low. Yeah, that's about the only thing I think really needs to be changed right now. But look at this. Flamers are about to own them. Oh, God. The flamers died, but maybe it was worth it. <laughs> nice grenade. Yeah. Oh, here comes the emplacement destroying stormtroopers. Yeah, Guderian's wisely using uh, the buildings to block the line of sight. Yeah, oh, wow, God, look at that. Look at that. Trek shots. Yeah. It was already slightly damaged, but uh, here comes the next one. And that's it. Ouch. I wonder how uh, Bone Dog's going to rally from this one. I mean, I can't see this yeah. game progressing much longer We've like this. We've only got but... half, right? Yeah, less than halfway, about a less than yeah, about a third, maybe a little, a little bit more, of now, a third, blah blah blah. Something <laughs> should be learned from this, though. I mean, like in real war, it, it, at least in the real World War Two, the the there would constantly be patrols along the front lines because you have to know where your enemy is and what they're doing. And in and it's sort of similar in Company of Heroes because if you notice, this entire middle sector has been completely ignored by the Axis player. Uh, so it seems to me like, you know, there was never anything there that was defending it, and he's had a unit that could cap it and a unit that could protect it the entire time. He could have been dro dropping the, the victory points down, but he just hasn't really noticed. Uh-oh, I yeah. hope the storms don't get revealed. They did! Ah! Oh, he got obliterated. I, just, really I just think it was funny, and it's like you kind of see that a lot in replay some well see that every once in a while but it's like the second someone that that you know is a good player is losing and getting outplayed they automatically think they're up against the smurf now i'm not saying nine times out of ten they aren't but i just think it's pretty funny oh that, no why are you charging a, in there with a stug for you're getting rear shot uh, he's, now. Already, he's already got his manpower's worth by running over yeah i guess he did oh that's disgusting man this is a slaughter Oh, there's two commando squads now. What the heck happened? Oh, the Pumas happened to them. I don't know what he's talking about. Did he throw a grenade at the storms or something? I think I think he's talking about uh, the Nebel Warfare it didn't do anything to the storms. Oh. It's because of the armor type, soldier armor type. That's why. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if um, it's the same on the Nebel. Yeah, this is this is just bad. I think it's just that the the. The friendly armor damage is still screwed up on the damage tables. I don't think I ever remember them fixing that. Yeah, I pray that he that this barrage does nothing to Bone Dog's forces. It's gonna be very sad if he uh, if he gets a good hit off. Ouch! Damage engine on what? the truck. Really? Oh, retreat to the captain. Not a bad idea. Very smart. Well played on that. He's definitely got to make a push. He's got to ignore the right. He probably needs to figure out something on how to maybe do some, you know, behind the lines Ooh. harassment. Oh, Storm Squad's getting obliterated. Yeah, Recon Squad. Very, uh, very nicely played. Using the cover to yeah, his advantage. Yeah, they were weak, so the cover one. allowed him to have a huge advantage there. Yeah. Hopefully he can get rid of this Shrek menace on the right. We got two Shreks. Easily he's going to be able to... We got to retreat back. Looks like we might have a big push here. Right here, this is this is bad. Oh, look at that Piat's opening yeah. up. Oh man, ouch! Big turn of events oh, right there. Oh boy! Now he's gonna get both those Shreks. That's gonna be a big problem. Well, man, I, I, the cat, the lieutenant can get one. I don't know. There's one other squad that can, yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Ouch. Those Pumas died at Piat's real quick. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this was this was what Bone Dog uh, really needed at this point. If was still, uh, a if the Axis player stakes. had still had his uh, his officer, that probably could have been avoided by retreating that blob of squads. Or oh at least man! The Piats. 
And the Nevils are going to get taken out, too. Looks like we might have uh, the Commando already. Uh, yep. I mean, sorry, not Commando no, already. Officer already. Officer. Oh, I didn't even see the Officer. He built oh another my one. God. Oh, boy. Wow. That's a lot of wow. XP. The Axis player has floating 900. Uh-oh, Glider coming in. Yeah, say goodbye to your ah. Nebel. Ran over one of the Nebels. See ya. Guys. Cap it. There you go. There you go. Now you're going to bring it home. Bring it home. What happened to all the Axis troops? Oh, man. Can't believe he lost that yeah. Storm Squad. Can't believe the Puma's been yeah, sitting over right here. here. Yeah, and he just retreated the Pios. Not not the best, uh, not the, the best he play. He at least decapped the point so on the far, right, but, but he's got to recap it, too. Yeah, VP is, uh, is, uh, 324 to 446, and we got the decap on the right, so no advantage, uh, being gained at this point from either player, VP-wise. Uh, MP44 is coming up on the right, easily going to make oh, short work of that Nebel work. Yeah, I'm surprised he Please. actually chose to leave the Nebel there. He attacked the yep. HQ. That's why. Yeah. Here comes the commandos. Uh, half half health squad, half men. He's definitely Force gonna retreat. have to get out of there. No, no, that was he just had to he just had to retreat. We, you gotta notice though the uh, where the sandbags used to be. We do have a uh, demo charge. So Ooh, yeah. If Darian's not careful. Um, well, some, he's not the one blobbing his forces him. though. Yeah, I don't know about uh, Bone Dog's micro. His macro seems pretty good. He seems to have a, a pretty good handle on what's going on. But uh, as of now, I mean, he's really been blobbing. The the only attempt he made to even go to the left side at all was uh, with the captain, and uh, he has, you know, I don't know if he lost it, but he had two recon uh, sections. Reconned infantry sections earlier definitely could have could have tried a little bit maybe send a little piot squad Brits aren't really great for harassing um, Wow, we have a tiger on the field already. Yeah, well the axe well, player has gotten a lot of XP minutes. Yeah, and he's GTF Oh nice. He's dropping the nebels right on the retreat path got a couple of them there I'm gonna laugh if uh, one of these nebel barrages sets off the the demo charge Ooh, and blows up funny bone dogs uh oh <laughs> Oh, that tiger's going right over the demo charge. Watch out. He's got the, the runes or something there, too. <laughs> no, he can see it. You can you know, oh. see it's detected. How did he, he get detected? I don't know. There it goes. That's there really weird. You can see it. Your your thing will actually shoot at it. I, I don't know why it does that, but it's, it's detectable. I thought it was invisible just... a lot of the time. Yeah, it's just half of the, well, it is. It's like half of the time you send your, your squad to cap a point, you're not looking, and the Brit player basically just hits detonate and you lose the squad. Heroic charge going off. Looks like that 17-pounder uh, might not get up. We do have an oh, uh, officer already coming in again. Oh, no! This, oh, this... no! That's like registered, baby. That's damage. Yeah, that's just ownage on a stick right and there. Panzer... <laughs> and we got Panzer Shreks on the right with the lieutenant there. Dude, wait. <laughs> I don't know how this even continues for the next, you know, 10 minutes or 20 minutes here. <laughs> I mean, he must get real cocky with that tiger. Oh, it's got Button. We got Shrek's hitting it, but it's from the front, so it's not doing too much. Yeah, this oh, is glider! Oh, is it gonna kill him? It did! It got two of them! Oh no! <sighs> oh, and the oh, here comes all the infantry Big support is getting destroyed. But right here comes there. more officer Artie before he retreats. Uh, we got a it's Shrek all up to the cap. Those... It's all up to the, the, the lieutenant there. Yeah, those things are pretty deadly. Uh, there's a Piot, It looks like underneath the, the tiger. <laughs> The Nebelwerfer is uh, moving in the north, looks surprisingly quiet. Uh, Bone Dog hasn't put in points. Uh, he's got six CPs. Losing everything here. This can't go on for much longer. Uh, really unorthodox tactics being used. Uh, I think that officer, man. But try, but, uh, take let's, take let's, note, folks. <laughs> let's, let's be clear here. If orthodox tactics were being used, this would have been over a while ago. And we wouldn't have had so much fun. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Unorthodox. Uh -oh. Don't bone... charge with your tiger against a Panzer Shrek com com commando squad. Can't even talk. Yeah, that Puma's still sitting there. It it moved about face to the left. So. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh yeah. no. Yeah, Brits uh, are so helpless against the Wehrmacht. Pretty much. <laughs> I don't know. It's Sturzdorf. It's tough. It's really tough. It's, th it's such You've a big got map. Another IED place next to the victory point now. Yeah, Seriously, hopefully that just cap that middle. Come on. It's even got a thing there. What the hell is there? Is that an IED? Yeah, it is. It's an IED. It is. Yep. I thought it might have yeah, been a really weapon. I'm really surprised um, that Guderian hasn't hasn't capped that VP. He's made no effort. Uh, there is the decap on the left. Uh, not sure what even decap that. To be oh, honest, it might have been. Uh, I certainly missed it. Oh, I did too, actually. Infantry section and commandos, and one more sapper squad. That's all the British player has right now. Yep. They've both done a good yep. job of annihilating each other. There's another sapper squad. Nope, that's sorry, that's an infantry section. But that sometimes, it, sometimes, probably a long time ago, um, considering he has 400 fuel, uh, Bone Dog might have wanted to consider to move that uh, field support truck somewhere else as my phone rings. And I'm going to have to forward that call. Um. Yeah, uh, he might have uh -oh. wanted to move that field support truck a little bit closer to the front, uh, one one way or the other, probably the other way. Wait um, for it. Maybe just they're placing bring a IEDs. They're gonna drop a bundle grenade on the IEDs. Wait for it. There it is. Oh god. Oh, oh it didn't go off. Wow. They can't see it though. It's so weird how you can see it sometimes but not others. Yeah, your your squad will automatically fire on it if you stop beeping. Stop <laughs> beeping. That's that's the uh, Morse so code for pals? don't walk there. It's an IED. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Bodog finally chooses uh, to go right side. Not sure what he was waiting for. He had seven points. Um, you know, decoy artillery might have helped out uh, a little bit earlier in this game. Wow, what they can't this? hit it, shit. Look at this. It's right there, guys. Next to emplacement. Yeah, well, they're MP44s, so the distance is pretty oh, bad. Oh, Flak Panzer. Okay. But, Flak Panzer. Oh, two AT guns. That's what he's been doing with all his manpower. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is very bad. Tiger, no. No, don't do it, Tiger. What, am I talking to Spider-Man now? I don't know. Oh, this is bad. Damage uh, engine! Oh! Yeah, that's really bad. Tiger down! Tiger down! Oh, that he's gonna lose that now. But he's got enough uh, manpower for another one. I guess he's suiciding here. Yeah, I don't think he cares. Plus, he can probably he's probably got enough resources to manpower his blitz. Uh, yeah. No, he might have used it. No, he doesn't have manpower blitz at all, actually, on his, on his task. He probably could get it. He's got... No, he's got two. If he has assault, he can get it. I don't know if he has that or not yet. Yep. A VP is being recapped. Uh, officer oh, lingering around on the right, looking for some more uh, emplacements to own. Officer seems to be the best counter to these emplacements. <coughs> British yeah. emplacements, spam. Well, that if plus you can get off that registered. Meanwhile, yeah. the British player still has a commando squad with a Piat and a Panzer Shrek. Unless that's just a Panzer Shrek. Another tiger. Too bad he can't get two. I miss those days, sort of. A little part of me does, but I don't want to see, you know, endgame tank spam and replace everything like it did. And uh, looks like we have decoy, decoy arty. And uh, he could drop a tetrarch with some super uber micro, which I'm pretty sure Bone Dog's capable of. I uh, might be able to uh, punk that tiger, show him who. <laughs> Who's the bitch? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher jumps out. Ha ha, Tiger Ace! You got... <laughs> you get yeah, that? That's the part is... where he gets shot in the head because Germans don't stand up for that crap. 
Yeah, I would have liked to see uh, an earlier Stewart. I think that really is a well micro Stewart could have definitely helped him. I think he was just a bit nervous, uh, you know, after seeing Puma so fast to invest into a into a Stewart, which would only be good for getting rid of the Pumas that, you know, a stug or two was going to follow it up and that the investment wasn't worth it. But uh, certainly this emplacements, I don't think he was expecting an officer to roll out and just own those two emplacements like uh, like like what happened. Especially the first one. Seemed like he was Bone Dog was finally, you know, gaining ground, get, getting a little solid hold on the right. Um, maybe would have had the time to tech up to Cromwell's, but unfortunately the big breakthrough happened and he just didn't have the time to uh, to get out that extra truck. I definitely could be using, you know, a Firefly or something right about now as a, as a Tiger deterrent. Uh, he hasn't teched up. I think that's the problem. He's relying on these emplacements. Well, yeah, he must have lots of fuel right now. Yeah, these emplacements, with the amount of fuel he has, these emplacements were definitely, manpower-wise, could have been perhaps better invested into oh, a uh, no. bundle nade or commando grenade. Uh, it could have been invested into a Firefly or some kind of endgame uh, tank for the Brits uh, out of the armored command truck. And I know you're... Oh, because... no! Lost a Panzer Shrek. Pick it up and run! Pick it up and run! They got it. I think they got it back from the commando squad there. Yep. No, they still have theirs, too. I don't know. I think yeah, the but, I think the Germans but, dropped that one. Uh, another glider coming in. Uh, uh -huh. What is it? Tetrarch? No, it no, should have been commandos. maybe. Four commandos. Four commandos. Interesting. Now Bodog's finally harassing on the left hand side with an infantry section. Definitely could have done this about 20 minutes ago or 10 minutes ago. But certainly their the harassment was lacking this game. Uh, he blobbed I think a little bit too much on the right uh, early on. Didn't didn't spread out his forces at all. Um, I, I don't blame him because he was he was gaining ground, but uh, still, you know, he, he could have afforded. He had enough squads uh, to maybe do a little bit of light harassment on the left. Can always retreat, you know. Yeah. Keep Guderian on his toes. Tiger's not okay. Here we go. Big shot on the. Oh, nice cloaking. Oh man! So right now, um, this commandos just got owned. But you know, I really think they could be using some veterancy here for the for the Axis player. He's not using the fuel for anything else right now. Yeah, I'm really you surprised. You could use some veterancy I, I, or Knight's Cross or both. Yeah, Knight's Cross would be nice. Uh, I mean, stop putting munitions into the storms. Knights Cross are going to hold up better than Storms anyway, even in Storms with MP44s. Yeah. Headquarters command truck's definitely going down. Good night. Bundled nade. Oh, oh God. Sappers are in big trouble. This could be the breakthrough. Now, if he could yeah. drop some Artie or something on this 17-pounder, it's all over, because that Tiger's just going to eat everything up right now. Unless, of course, uh, it sits back here and does nothing. Yeah. He's gonna have to get a replacement. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't tech up to Cromwell's. He, you know, favored getting too many emplacements. I think, um, <clears throat> you know, get a Stewart, hold back, get a Piot squad, hold back, try to hold your ground. But you gotta tech up to the armored command truck. Uh, I just, you can't replace Cromwell kiting or Firefly with button combination against Tigers and and uh, and the like. So. It's a bit unfortunate. I think Bone Dog's teching, uh, teching choices didn't didn't work out too good for him. But hell, I mean, it was such an unconventional game coming from Gudarian that it doesn't surprise oh, me no, that. Oh the officer's uh, gonna bite it. It's been oh! a bit off. Just a puff of red smoke. <clears throat> yeah. Bridger, I haven't found a reliable counter to commandos. What is going on? Why do I keep on seeing that on the forums? I don't get it. Like, this is a shining example of why commando spam doesn't work, so to speak. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I only lost that game because the guy commando spammed. I didn't know what to do against it. I didn't know how to use a Puma or get MP44s on my stormtroopers. Wow, look at that. Look at that headquarters command truck. This is just like flying through the lumber. Ricocheting left, right, doing a little dance, make a little love. What is he packing Get up the support truck for? Where's he going? 
going right back to uh, Death Spot 101. I, I don't think he did it. I think he did it by accident. Would have been interesting right now if he if he would be willing to. I don't think he is, but to uh, to switch sides, you know, <clears throat> to kind of go over to the to the left, park his truck on the ten munitions. And try to work his way from there. At least then he would have some buildings to go into. Um, on the right, he's got buildings, but he hasn't—he hasn't made good use of that. Um. Here comes uh, probably the final attack against the 17-pounder. Enter the tiger. Here it comes. God, and another Nebel drops on the base. See ya! Oh, I couldn't quite crush him. Poor Tiger. I feel like I'm right there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, this is terrible! The Tiger is absolutely decimating British troops. Ouch. No chance in this battle. No need I to charge in. You can do much damage from just sitting back here. And shoot the Piat the... squad in the building. Come on. The GG, I can smell it. Yeah. Can you smell a GG he could, coming He could up? call the Urban Assault team in, too, right now to help out, because I don't think he's going to lose this, this Tiger. Oh, not a bad grenade on the left there. Yeah. Uh, this one's winding down. Be over in a minute. Indeed. Smurfs on or Gudarian. Smurf, Smurfs on or you gotta give the guy a free win because he deserved it. Because you're playing on a Smurf. That's not fair. Give him a free win. Come on, man. Give him a free win. He deserved it. Come on. Did you see that argument on the forums? No, but I can tell you don't like it. I don't like it. I think it's noble. I think it's honorable. But I think at the same time, it's it's jacked up, you know? We are scratching your paint job. Yeah, I think we got a GG coming in real soon here. Yeah, Lieutenant here. Lieutenant here. Well, this one. I mean, the whole Smurfs honor debate is I can understand. Yeah, you don't want to fuck someone over because you're playing on some bullshit account that you don't care about, and they don't. You know, they shouldn't get the loss because it's on their account. But you know, you, the guy lost, right? So you can't, I mean, he's not, a, this has nothing to do with this replay, but, I mean, do you think he should give him the win because he's playing on a smurf? Do you think that, that it's like when you get a win by default because I'm smurfing? Is that the way it should be? Is that fair? Doesn't sound right to me. Yeah. Especially I mean, the, the idea behind the, that is saying, you know what, I, I... I, I shouldn't take as big a hit against you as I'm going to because you're a smurf and if I if you had beaten me with your regular account I would have only lost a few points whereas now I'm gonna lose a lot but that doesn't matter because they changed the system so it takes into account your real your real rank right 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 so, so I, don't see how that, I think the whole argument is moot it is kind of moot as you would say it made sense maybe a year ago but I guess fundamentally, it's just you know people that take pride in their records, top players or some top players, and when they take a loss like this, or you know in any situation that <clears throat> because you're on a Smurf, it's automatically like you didn't deserve to, to give the win, and you should just quit out. But because uh, the the win doesn't, the argument is the win doesn't mean anything for for you. Whoa. You know, so why should why should I? I'd take a punishment for it, you know? And here comes That's... the end game. Boom. Um, I think. There it is. Killed. You have been killed. obliterated, good sir. Thank you for the game. Look at this. Killed. Look at all this scrap over here. I don't even know what that is. Some kind of wooden pentagon. 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 That's saying the Americans are about to come into the British aid or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm reaching. I'm reaching here. All right. So sort of a, a different game this week. I yeah. think we said all we had to say at the closing there, so I guess we're going to wrap it up here.
episode number 60, the last game of season 5. We'll be back again next week for season 6, episode 1 of Tales of Heroes right here on the Gamefire Network. Hopefully the patch will be out and we can have some new and exciting replays looking at how the patch changes everything. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Or night. Or afternoon. Or early, early morning. 